Ross, thanks for joining us. Congratulations on that win. Thank you, Dave. Um, I won't tell you the terminology in which I put it, but the thing to the boys at the end there was, you don't make it very easy for me against Cambridge. So um, but I'm delighted that I said, I've said over the course of the last two weeks, really since the Oldham game, that we need to do the League Two things a little bit better. Uh, very disappointed in the goal that we let in, but I think today we showed, it, especially in the first sort of first half, first hour, we showed some real control on the game, and I think probably for the first time in a while, created a lot more opportunities of shooting a goal. That's without me looking at the stats yet. So, pleased with the all-round performance, pleased to get over the line, and pleased in, in which the, you know we were under the cosh a little bit, but we managed to see it through. Very positive from the start. Yeah, we, that, that's been our focus. You know, I, I've said over the last little while that um, my. Um, my, my focus really has been to try and find the way of playing and, and, a, and a control on games because I feel as though the level of football that we're at now, teams do that better. And if you don't, um, if you don't gather control, in whichever way you play, that doesn't mean dominating possession of the ball. If you play direct, you've got to get control on games because otherwise, otherwise you suffer against the, some of the good teams. And I feel as though we've really sort of started to build that and I can see that coming along. Now the next phase that we can, you know, the boys know the identity of what we're about. It's about trying to be a little bit more creative and I felt felt like today there were spells where we did that. With Satorio Johnson and Jordan Maguire drew out front, there's so much pace So and we saw that invention particularly early on in the game. Yeah, it's a talented front three as it would be if any of the other boys were in it but I felt that um, their, their energy would be really important to us today. Um, we know that Jordan can come up with the bits of quality that, that he does and he has done and obviously the, you know, what he did in the first half we felt he could be a, be a threat in those wide areas switched his side for the first time in quite a while because he's found himself on I suppose the side that we're standing there on the left where, where he crosses more often but we felt that he might be able to create himself opportunities to get a few more shots off at goal and come in on that stronger foot today and Danny Johnson, that really was a goal scorer's goal, wasn't it? Yeah, two goal scorer's goals for him now. And I think there's been no secret made of the fact that that's one of Danny's strengths. I don't want to take anything else away from him because I think he, he works tirelessly. And because he's not six foot three, people feel as probably look at our front three. And we've had to adjust a little bit today because we haven't got a major focal point. But we have to try to approach that a little bit differently and get the ball up the pitch in a, in a different manner. And I felt that when it went around Danny, he also contributed. But that's what goal scorers do. They get on the end of them things. 80 minutes, Cambridge had two chances, two set pieces. One hit the post, the other went in the back of the net. Which is a frustration. Um... I feel as though, obviously, I'm going to criticise the goal that we let in and I'm going to look at how we did or didn't defend that. Um, there was an element of people losing their men, which isn't right, uh, but then at the same time, it sort of comes off the side of Cissé's head and drops and, and, and we need to be around that. There's been too many of them goals this year that we've, we've not been the ones that are, that are sweeping it up. But fortunately, we didn't, uh, didn't crumble in that, in that bombardment that came towards the end and we, and we showed the qualities to get through it. Great to see Joby McEnough back on the pitch and we're so close to having a goal to talk about. Hell of a strike, uh, with his, if it is such a thing, but a weaker foot. Um, I, I can't express how much of a, a support and, a, and um, you know how great he's been for me this season. Um, but ultimately, we want to see him out there. You know, it, he was, and I think it's easy to forget, isn't it, what a major influence he was on us last year. And we kept rolling him out in the best way that we could at the back end of the season, knowing he was injured. And he kept going through it, and and he was, a, you know, a massive part of, of what we achieved. Um, so to see him out there today, in that when it, you know when it's getting tough and when it's getting difficult, to be able to bring him off the bench today from a selfish perspective he's fantastic I'd rather him be out there than sat next to me in the nicest possible way um, and it's just about trying to build that up and continue so that we can make him stronger and see him out there more often and he looks so sharp he looks so fit does it make you wonder how different this season would have been with him I think you always do um, I don't want to try and, I don't want to take anything else away from everybody else but what because jo, the, anybody else in the squad hasn't got what Joby's got no, no one else is 38 years old and played at the level that, that he has unless I'm wrong but um he has those qualities that even if he's slightly off the pace or if, if he's tiring or he's got the ability because of, he's such a good player and he's, he is so, in, still in such good condition to, to maybe think a little bit more clearly and manage people around him. And I think that's a massive part of, of any team is having those leaders that can, that can drive you over the difficult moments and, and Jobs has contributed to doing that today. Obviously, you're thinking about players for next season. Is Joby one of them? I hope so. Um, but I think ultimately what we have to do is we have to Leave that, leave that in Joby's. Is that probably the easiest way of describing that, of saying to him, you know, how capable do you feel between now and the end of the season? The great thing is, is we've still got a good chunk of football to go for him to realise that. And, and, and when you get to, I say his age, but our age, he's a day older than me, he can start 
and I, don't, I do remind him of that. He, <laughs> he's, he can start to make the decisions of what his future is going to look like. I genuinely hope that it's going to be so first and foremost at Leighton Orient, but, but, but in a playing capacity it would be wonderful. If not, I'm sure there'll be another responsibility for him. The changes you made were defensive and in the end it had to be a very good save from Lawrence Figueroa to ensure the win. And he's got that, that's why we signed him. Uh, made the very good save against Oldham a um, couple of weeks ago. So, yep. You know that's what we what we we call upon him for. Um, it was it was a strange change because obviously we bought we bought Leon but we bought Joe on. So I suppose it sort of balances it out to to say that it's defensive. I feel as though um, James Brophy's been excellent at left back since since I put him there, uh, and it's been very difficult for Joe to get back in the team. And I know it causes a lot of conversation amongst people. So for me. I felt it was going to shore us up a little bit with Joe's temperament and his qualities as a defender, um, but also really keen to, to get Joe on the pitch because he's such an important member of the squad. A very strong bench, but without Sam Sargent or a goalkeeper. Yeah, he suffered a shoulder injury, which is very frustrating um, for Sarge. He's been suffering it since the Newport game, if I'm brutally honest. It's been something that we had to sort of manage for a little while. Um, and then he's come out of the team and, and we felt that it might repair by sort of taking a bit of a load off of him and him not having to be bumped and bruised in a game. But he went down injured in training and obviously with, with the way training in is at the moment and changing from surfaces and you know and, and facilities not being at their at their very best, um, it, it meant that he suffered a bit of an injury to his shoulder. But it's not as severe as we first thought. So um, now it's a case of having a look through the week to see if he, he repairs um, or if there's an alternative to, to make sure that we're covered. Because I don't think that Matt Harold's quite the one that we need to. <laughs> it's seven unbeaten at home now. That's probably the biggest change, the biggest improvement since you've become the head coach on a permanent basis. You have to go back all the way back to 2013 for these sort of stats. In the end, I'll have to go back even further because over recent years, the home record hasn't been as good as it is now. No, I think, um, first of all, I'm proud of that because you and I have spoken, Dave, on a number of occasions about how poor our home, home form was. And I talked to Matt Porter and we talk about, you know, the majority of our fans watch us at home. So we want to go and put on results and performances that are going to get people excited because they're the most people that come every week you know it's great winning away from home and it's a delight to celebrate with the away fans but ultimately we've got 5,000 people around about here we want to we want to put a smile on their faces so it's been a focus I feel as though obviously last year was a tough place for anybody a tough tough place for anybody to come um but we weren't picking up the results and, and certainly for me weren't putting in the performances that we did uh, we wanted so We've corrected it and I feel that we're really striving and we're making it a, a difficult place for people to come. There'll probably be 15,000 at Bradford next weekend. That's going to be a test, isn't it? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I don't know if you've seen their pitch. My God, it's... Um, yeah, I don't even know what it is. It's, uh, it's very, very difficult for anybody at the moment. Ground staff is tough, as is, as is a difficult service to play on. I think you see that a few of the boys today are breaking away and the ball bobbles up around their feet. So it's going to be a, a, probably a different game of football away to Bradford next week. It's a daunting place to go. It's a... Uh, I'm sure, sure a place that as a player you uh, you thrive on going and playing in front of crowds like that and when it gets going there it, it's, it's a great place to play your football but we'll certainly be going there to make it a little bit quieter Finally for me well sign of the times players not allowed to shake hands before the game uh-huh. Do you know what was really um, really impressive for me was I went into I don't normally do the team sheet Joby normally does it I went in to see the referee before the game and there's six officials in there people that are out on the pitch, people that are assessing them, and I shook all their hands, like we always do, like everyone does. And then he told us we weren't allowed to shake hands. <laughs> and the players weren't going to shake hands, so I sort of walked back out the changing room, all looking around the room, didn't really know how to leave. Um, it, 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 I hope it, obviously, you know, anybody that's suffering with, with the illness and, and with all, everyone's got to take their, um, their measures and their precautions to make sure that that we don't we don't spread anything further, but uh, it is quite an unusual circus. But it's a, I've had people dangling their elbow at me all day. Yeah, it's a, it's a strange decision because it's a physical game. You have got hands in faces. Yeah, it? I mean I cuddled Theo at the end there, so I don't know if I'm <laughs> going to pick anything up off of him. But um, that's it, where do you stop? It's, it's tough, isn't it? But I understand it, and I, and I suppose to a point as well. It's the football league, the FA, trying to trying to show their support of, of, of what's out there at the moment so anything that we can do to maybe heighten that and help that then, then, then we all have to do it Congratulations thanks Ross thank, thank you, you.